Hey, this is Ken Rosever. We're going to take some time this evening and I'm going to talk to you about inverse functions. A function we know is a relation in which each element of the domain, which are x values, maps to just one element in the range. Those are our y values. Uh, the nice thing about x, uh, functions is each x has just one y. That's actually why we say y is a function of x, because y is determined. It's x's function to determine what y is. Um, and we say uh, that x or that the function passes the the vertical line test, and it demonstrates that correspondence that each x uh, maps to just one y. So that's what's nice about functions that x predicts y every time. If we know x, we know y. And you can see that over here with these two functions that I put over here on the right. Um, the first function is a linear function, and we can see x1 is right here, and it maps up and over, and there's y1. That is not a very straight line, which is why I copied and pasted in a lot of my notes. Um, over here we have a parabola and we see once again that because it's a function each x has one y. But the distinction between these two um, other than the fact you know that um, one's a line and one's a parabola and uh, is that uh, over here each y is maps only back to one x. If you look uh, this y corresponds only with this x and this y here to this x here. Each y has just one x but over here many of the y's like this one has two x's. So if, uh, if this were a human being type relationship and x's were guys and uh, y's were girls, well we would say these guys uh, were in a monogamous relationship. Over here it looks like the girl has two boyfriends and that's not good because um, I'm a married man and if my wife calls me and says she's going on a date I like to have the certainty that it's with me and we don't have that here. Uh, over here if we know X we know Y but also if we know Y we know X. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence but over here there is not. There's actually a two to one correspondence or a one to two depending on which way you're doing it. This y is with corresponds with two different x's. All right. Functions that have the kind of correspondence that I characterized as monogamous or one to one functions like this and there's plenty of functions like that are called one to one functions. See, what would be nice, I said, and what is the case for some functions would be if knowing y gave us f, uh, x as well. We said knowing x gives us y, well knowing y gives us x when uh, the function is one to one. Okay, and let me highlight that. Functions that do this where each x has one y and each y has one x are called one to one functions. Let's talk some more about these. How do we determine if a function is a one-to-one -one function? Well, there's actually uh, two ways. A function f, this is what the book says, is a one-to-one -one function if for all elements a and b from the domain of f, so these are some x's, um, if a doesn't equal b, that implies that f of a does not equal f of b. Basically, over here I can say that um, this function is not one-to-one -one because here's a, here's b, a doesn't equal b, negative 2 does not equal 2, but f of a does equal f of b. But um, that's like a counterexample. So I'm showing that this is not one-to-one. -one. How do I sh show something is one-to-one? -one? Well, I actually can't do it from this statement, uh, I would actually have to use what's called the contrapositive. It's a, 
it's logically equivalent to this but what it is is the negation of both statements flipped around so I'm gonna take this and write as contrapositive and that would be f of a equal to b implies um, a equals b so if I want to show that a function is one to one I'm not going to do it based on this because this is hard to prove but I'm gonna prove it with something logically equivalent and if this is true then it means this is true which means the function is one to one so now I'm gonna do this with y equals x cubed I want to show that y equals x cubed is one to one so I'm gonna say suppose f of a equals f of b and from that I want to show that that implies that a equals b so f of a is going to be a cubed f of b is going to be b cubed taking the cube root of both sides I get a equals b there f of a equals f of b implied that a equals b and therefore the function is one to one a, a more involved example might be f of x equals negative 4x plus 12 so I want to show that this function is one to one let me erase this so what I begin with is I assume that f of a equals f of b and then I say well negative 4 times a plus 12 must equal negative 4 times b plus 12 therefore negative 4a equals negative 4b and uh, that means a equals b when you divide both sides by uh, 4 so that's how you would prove that two functions are one-to-one -one. if you suspect that two functions are not one-to-one -one, then it's up to you to find a counterexample like I did with my uh, y equals x to the fourth let me do another one of those f of x equals 25 minus x squared if you actually graph this on your calculator you would get something that looks like a half circle with a radius 5 so suppose you wanted to show that this were one-to-one -one. Uh, you try to do what you try to do this and then what you'd square both sides and you get this then you get rid of the 25's and then you divide by negative and you'd be left with this now here's the problem with this if I take the square root of both sides I have to write a plus or minus right so I'd have plus or minus a equals plus or minus b which means a could equal b or a could equal negative b does that make sense so it looks to me like these might not be one to one to prove it I'd actually have to find an example where um, the outputs are the same but the inputs are opposite because that's what it looks like so how could I do that maybe I could plug in three let's find f of three 25 minus 3 squared is 25 minus 9 which is 16 which is square rooted is 4 alright so I got that now if I do f of negative 3 we quickly see why this is not 1 to 1 because if I plug in a negative 3 here then the squaring makes this also a positive 9 so I have 25 minus 9 again which is also 16 which is also has a square root of 4 so there you go okay so if you want to prove two functions are one-to-one -one, you show that f of a equals f of b implies a equals b if you want to show that two functions or you suspect that they are not and by the way if a function uh, has an even power in it it typically is not one-to-one -one, um, because as you would solve it you get a plus or minus um, so and you know that a a squaring function is not one to one because of our parabola on our first page kind of demonstrated that um, this y has two x's so 
Anyways, um, if you want to show that something is not one-to-one, -one, you have to find a counterexample. If we are given a graph, this is super important. Let me draw some graphs here. And we want to know, is it one-to-one? -one? Another way of checking, you know, if they give us a function, if we can imagine the graph, then we can uh, sketch it and just its general outline and we can kind of get a feel if it's one to one because if each if each y maps back to one x then we shouldn't have a horizontal line that hits in two places notice when I'm doing a cubing function this y goes to this x this y move the horizontal line up goes to this x move the horizontal line down this y goes to this x uh, move the horizontal line further this y goes to this x and why does it only go to one x because the horizontal line that I'm drawing hits only in one place but over here as I draw a horizontal line it hits in two places so whoops so that y actually had two x's so that's called the horizontal line test so if you don't have to prove it analytically just draw a sketch horizontal line test if it hits in more than one place uh, if a horizontal line hits a function in more than one place it is not one to one